Anyway, to kind of end it, because I said I'd only be going for an hour, so I'm going to quickly talk about the Brendan thing. Brendan decided to go on his Shorb show, which I called the Shorb Shoe. I'm flipping incorrectly when I was searching for the show on YouTube, like an absolute donut here. As you can see, me calling it the Shorb Shoe, which is not funny in the slightest, but could be. The intro is something to behold. This is Brendan Shorb talking post UFC 281. Let's hear what he has to say. What is up, fam? It is Monday morning, 9 o'clock a.m on this beautiful crisp calabasas morning how's everybody doing great jesus christos if ever there was an advertisement to not drink alcohol and to maybe chill out with the flipping booze especially myself right i mean this is kind of speak i'm speaking to me right i'm giving myself a pep talk i'm kind of preaching to the choir but if ever there was an advertisement to really chill out with the partying chill out with the drugs chill out with the going out this might be it jesus crispy look at this guy brother because the funny thing is i think i mentioned it elsewhere he you know apart from everything else you know this guy is a what multi-millionaire he's probably got a rolex on a very expensive jacket probably wearing some expensive shoes got a fresh haircut all that malarkey um a, you know a really swanky studio a producer that works on it like all this good stuff that looks great advertisers whatever it may be but when you look at the face the face never lies, isn't it? That looks like somebody that's been out raving. That's the thing that really looks crazy about it. He doesn't even party. Not in a conventional sense. He's not going out to a club. He's not, you know, doing all that sort of stuff. He's performing at comedy shows, taking pictures with fans and drinking on stage. But that's it. But just from drinking alone every single day, mostly in the morning and the afternoon, I'm assuming, and then driving back home drunk, right? This is what you end up looking like. He looks absolutely terrible. Terrible. And this guy's drinking booze at 9 a.m. in the morning as he's recording this show. 9 a.m what is up fam it is monday morning nine o'clock like, look, look at how sunken and bruised up and horrendous his eyes look man like this is an interesting part i think i've mentioned before because i'm quite naive and ignorant to these things because i just assume you can just do whatever you need to do if you have balance but the actuality in life is that at a certain age i'll probably have to stop everything at the moment, I only go out and go crazy on the weekends, if that. But I know eventually I have to stop everything if I want my face not to look like this. And I want to make sure that my organs and my body is not in a terrible state. I'll just have to sack, sack off everything and go completely sober. I know that's how, what I have to end up doing, right? Or end up, I'm having to do that in the future. One thing that's really enlightening and really kind of um, sobering to see is how brutal alcohol is and how it affects you. Because the thing with Brendan is that he didn't start drinking properly or heavily until he's like mid 30s. For the longest time, me being a fan, I remember when Brendan used to brag about being sober. He'd brag about being a stand up comedian who doesn't need to drink, being a stand up comedian who doesn't need to stay out late. He does his show, he hangs out a bit, and then he goes home to his family. He kind of lent in a bit to that whole idea that because he's a former professional athlete, that he has this athlete's mindset when it comes to stand up, and that even though he's not that talented at it, the fact that he's treating it like, an, like a sport and doing the sets and the reps every single day that's how he's you know been able to jump the line jump the queue and get all these deals and get a special so early and whatever it is and make so much money so quickly in a short space of time because he was treating like an athlete and he wasn't indulging in what you know comedians do which is kind of in indulging in vices and drugs and alcohol and girls and stuff he was just keeping himself clean not doing anything then of course something changed i think the thing that changed was when he heard that rogan story where rogan shared a couple of times that before he gets on stage he doesn't necessarily do that many drugs apart from you know the drugs that he uses to work out and the drugs that he smokes and did you know but in general i remember he shared some story i think off the back of Dave Chappelle because he smokes those cigarettes i remember joe sharing a story on his podcast where he said sometimes before a show he'll take a pool of a cigarette just to get the nicotine here and i guess if you don't smoke often and if you don't smoke often or at all if you do take a drag of a nicotine um or you get take a drag of a cigarette the nicotine can hit you and maybe give you a little bit of a jolt of energy and, and whatever excitement before you go onto the stage so that maybe can help and i think he also mentioned one time that he doesn't drink too much even when he's on stage but sometimes he'll take a shot uh, he'll take a shot i think of I think he said tequila or maybe it was vodka, I'm not too sure, and a pull on a cigarette before he goes on to give him a little bit of a jolt to get him into the mood. And I think and I think Brendan heard that and started doing that himself. And then, of course, you know, this guy always takes things to the excess, to the extreme, and he decided to then indulge properly into drinking heavily. I think that's what happened. But that aside, it is pretty gnarly to see how quickly alcohol can deteriorate you in like 
what four years or something he's been drinking heavily and now look how he looks he slurs his words you know he mispronounces things more than ever and it generally has made his face look horrendous and this is what i meant before when i said that i'm one of the people that believe that he definitely looked handsome before he definitely looked like a good looking dude i can imagine if you're a comedian and you saw him pulling up being six foot whatever it may be with a big frame having that cool peaky blinders haircut looking a certain way with his tattoos i can understand why some guys would feel inadequate and would say oh wow he's really hot compared to me i don't have fun but now he's starting to look like every other comedian especially now that he's wearing the clothes that he wears and whatnot but face wise he looks like every other comedian he's got that red puffy face just full up with like free drinks that he gets when he does stand up and fill the fucking fried food that you're eating late at night when you're doing stand up also like he just looks a mess completely absolute mess but like i said like it's crazy how quickly alcohol can alcohol can age you and there could be an argument to be said that alcohol itself may be way more detrimental than doing class a drugs on their own i know they usually go hand in hand it's very it's very rare to find somebody that does class a drugs and who also doesn't drink alcohol it's very very rare but i would imagine if you put people side by side and said this person has been doing i don't know cocaine for four years and this person has been drinking heavily for four years i think you could see a um a real difference in what they look like in terms of you know looking haggard and whatnot more so in a person that drinks booze as opposed to the person that does drugs i'd imagine so or maybe i'm off the mark i'm not really too sure but let's play a little bit more of the clip yeah i'm on this beautiful crisp calabasas morning how's why, everybody also why can't you pronounce crisp why is he saying crisp me personally i think it's laziness i don't think he has a speech impediment i've got one because i sometimes stutter on my words you can sort of notice when i get a bit too excited i'll kind of you know be steamrolling through my words i've got a legit speech impediment but i've had that since i was a kid and sometimes if i just just you know if i just take my time and you know with my sentences and my words it completely clears up but i think with him it's just pure laziness he just can't be bothered to pronounce things and it's like whatever comes out comes out you get it you get it if you get it you get it if you don't you don't kind of thing you're doing great I like how Chin answered. I was talking to the fans out there because I can hear you guys. <laughs> Chin's yeah. all nice, you all right. You yeah. know what? That's been great. Uche makes a good point here. Alcohol is especially worse because it's sold everywhere. 100% agree with that one. Why isn't the chat coming up on the screen, by the way? Huh. Why is it not coming up on the screen? I do not know. I do not know why the chat is not on the screen. But anyway, regardless, um, people say, Uche's saying here, when you sit down at a restaurant... The waiter doesn't ask you if you want heroin to go with your meal. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. You want a quick little bump, mate? Would you like a bump? Would you like a little bit of a, a little bit of brown, mate? Would you would your lasagna? A little bit of brown with your flipping steak. Obviously that doesn't happen, but yeah, big up. <laughs> uh what's up, man? Straight off the plane. I'm said boat. Straight off the plane from Houston, Texas. Shout out to H Town. Had a grand old time out in H Town, man. A really good time. Love Texas. Texas back to back for your boy. Can't get enough of Texas. Jesus Christ, uh, he looks horrendous. <laughs> and he looks so bad. Um, a lot of Tiger Thick out there. A lot of Tiger Thick. It's our biggest market. So I was meeting with specs and meeting with distributors. Your boy was working even when he wasn't on stage. But it was a grand old time. Shout out to everybody who came out. Um, yeah, the only bad thing is when you do this stuff, um, you know, I couldn't... Um, watch the ufc 281 live uh obviously i know what's going on because when we do the meet and greets or even fans that come up to me like dude you see what happened to izzy i'm like thank you no i didn't thank you so there's no way to not hear about it so i, I love i love this humble brag section in it i was a big dog in texas i was slinging my tiger fit cum whiskey to everybody all the fans were telling me about 281 all the fans were telling me about the results all the fans i love the humble brag segment at the start of the pod i love it I watched it last night and once again this morning. Um, so, you know, let's get right into UFC 281. Hell of a card from top to bottom. My God. There's finishes on finishes on finishes, especially on the main card, all finishes. Um, anyway, I, just I, about I, the main I card. don't got, care um, what he has to say about that. Yeah, UFC 281 was flipping six. So, anyway, whatever. Let, let him say what he wants to say about that. I don't care. Move on from that one quickly. Um, and then let me say a couple more things before I have to jet my bad. Let's just move us on here.
Let's put this on here because I think this was quite interesting. 